Hello everybody. Uh, in this video I'm going to be going through a plugin called RateMaster Go. Uh, what the plugin does is it will allow you to use a RateMaster as a go button for firing multiple executors at once uh, in tempo with the music. So I'm just going to give a couple of quick demonstrations on this actually working and then we'll get into the why and the how. So uh, first off all, all of my punt uh, executors have been linked to this rate master, so I'm gonna drop this guy down to zero. I'm going to set up a, uh, and before we do anything, uh, I have a two second fade set up on my colors and an eight second fade set up on my positions, which once integrated into this setup, these become beats. So two beat color fade, eight beat position fade, uh, no delay right now. And we're going to fire a new position, and we're going to fire a new gobo, and we're going to fire a new color as well. All right. So again, rate master stops, so nothing has happened on stage. We're going to tap out the tempo we want this to happen in. And again, two, two beats, color, eight beats, position, and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, stop. So... It allowed us to fire all those cues at once. And just to show that this does also work with delay times, I'm going to set both of these to no fade. And we're going to do a four beat delay uh, left to right. So we're going to set this up again, kill the rate master, uh, set up a new position, a new color, and four beat sweep. So one, two, three, four, done. I mean, VL 35s move slow. Anyways, so that is what it does. Um, so one uh, thing that I love about this, uh, if you aren't using rate masters with your punt setup, I highly encourage it. I love being able to have all my motions happen in a fixed number of beats with the music. Um, I feel like it gives it a lot closer of a look to something that's been cue stacked, something that's been uh, where your moves look like they were built for that song. Um, and blah blah blah, fuck, throw out the other, oh, and if you are trying to accomplish that, this allows you to get from a rate of zero directly to a rate that corresponds with your tap tempo without either having to um, tap it out yourself because it requires the extra beat tap in advance and syncing that up right, which is possible, um, or uh, trying to fade through the zone and try to get right into this little narrow area where everything is like a pixel apart and infuriating. Um, before I go any further with this, if all you're trying to do with your punt setup is this, but execute it in the number of seconds it was set for, um, not worrying about it, converting to beats, staying in tempo with the music, um, you don't need a plugin, you just need the rate one button. Um, that will take it from wherever it's at to a value of 1, so you can have it stopped, set up your look, hit rate 1, and you're good to go. If that's all you want to do, if that's all you have time to set up, there's your entire solution. Um, the plugin, again, is just to allow you to do that, but with your tapped tempo. Um, so, that is uh, the why around it, I suppose. So, Next up is the how. Uh, how are we setting this up? What do we have to do? So there are three steps to making this plugin work within the show file. Uh, step one is linking your executors to that rate master. So if you hit assign and click on any executor, uh, first off, you might end up with this screen first. Go to your options window. Uh, and under the speed column is your rate master option, uh, the third row down. And so by default, you will see rate individual. We change this to whatever punt, uh, whatever rate master we're using for our punt or busk setup. And that's it. If you have a bunch of these to do, you can make a macro that'll speed it up. So it, this is the syntax assign slash rate master equals rate whatever number rate master you're using, and then leave the at sign so then you can then hit an executor. Um, and that allows you to just hit the button, hit the executor, hit the button, hit the executor, and blast through them. Uh, and just to demonstrate that it does work, if we assign this, right now it's on an individual rate. If I click this guy, hit the mythos. Did it work? Oh, fucking, here we go. There we go. Assign that to that. And now if we check it, it has assigned that rate master to it. So, there's step one, assigning the rate master to everything. Step two, uh, you have to build a dummy effect. Uh, this is a, a workaround. Um, Lua is not actually able to read the value that a speedmaster currently has. 
However, it is able to read the value that an effect, uh, the speed value that an effect has. So if we build an effect for it to read, then it can see the tempo. Uh, so uh, there are three steps to setting up this step. Um, step one is naming the effect something unique, something that you're never going to reuse anywhere else in the show file. So I named mine underscore ref BPM. I figured that was pretty safe. Um, step two, uh, and sorry, that is because the plugin is referencing the effect by its name, so that way you can move it anywhere out of sight so it can still perform its function and not get in the way of anything else you're doing. Step two is linking up this effect to the tap tempo Speedmaster that you're using. So for me, that is uh, Speedmaster 2, so I linked it to that. The third step is making sure that your rate value in this effect is exactly 1, because if you have, for example, 0.08, it will multiply your actual BPM by this to give you this. And the problem is Lua is reading this value, not this value, so that will screw up everything. So we make sure that our rate is set for 1, and we're all happy. So we close that out, and that's the end of that. Step three is just checking your settings in the plugin itself. So we go down to see where our plugins are. Sorry, this one's got a lot of mess. Um, and there's three main settings that we're concerned with. Uh, setting one is the effect that it's referencing. So in here, we put the name of the effect as we built it uh, inside of these single quotes. Again, it was underscore ref BPM for me. The second value is the rate master we're linking to. For me, this is rate master number two. Set this number to match whichever rate master number you're using. Uh, the third value is the number of beats it will stay up for. So this is a feature so that if you want it to automatically, after eight beats, automatically drop back to zero, it will do that. Uh, again, by the number of beats based on whatever that current tempo is. If you set it to zero, as I have, as you may have noticed, it was not doing that for me. Um, if you set it to zero, you disable this feature. Uh, personally, it's not something I prefer to use. I'd rather know that I've manually reset uh, that rate master down to stopped. Uh, and also, I don't always want to set up every move on a punch show as a uh, cue. This is, only, this is specifically for when you're trying to do a bunch of moves at once and have it look like one big uh, a pre-built cue, basically. Um, so it's not something I want going all the time, uh, having this rate master stopped. However, if that is something you want, the feature's there if you choose to use it. The last field down here, verbose, this basically just controls uh, whether or not the information of what's happening prints to the command line and system monitor. So right now, if I run the rate master go plugin uh, in the system monitor, we will see in this cyan text that it has a It'll show you the BPM that it read, the rate that that is equivalent to, and then how long before it drops back to stopped, which in our case, it's not going to, so it just says disabled. Uh, so that's it for the user config settings, and if you've done all that right, everything will link up to wherever you set your BPM. Oh, for God's sake. Uh, you can keep your rate master matched up with it. Um, there are two notes of caution uh, when using this. Uh, one Anything that has a fade and a delay time of zero uh, will still fire when a rate master is stopped. So to demonstrate, I'm going to pull this guy. Just first off, I'm going to go to rate one. Uh, if we go back to our Gobo executors here. So right now I have a, <clears throat> for that purpose, a delay of 0.01 seconds uh, applied to everything. If I remove that from this executor, I can go over here. Drop this to stopped. And so, for example, if I change my color to red right now, we will see that nothing happens up here. If I change my position, nothing happens up here. If I fire this gobo, nothing happens. But if I fire the gobo that has no fade or delay, it will still go. So just be aware of that. Uh, make sure that everything has... I, I do a hundredth of a second on everything, uh, even on the macros that run my uh, delays. Uh, oops. <clears throat> uh, even in those, I've got a line that sets, that adds a hundredth of a second to all of my fixtures uh, just to make sure nothing is completely at zero uh, for the purposes of working with the setup. So all that to say, anything that has both a fade and a delay time of zero will still fire when this is stopped, so be planning around that. Uh, the second thing is 
you will not see the executors firing. So again, with this rate master stopped, you'll see that as I'm firing these cues, you're not seeing uh, the, you know, the load bar basically of it uh, progress. <clears throat> As I click on position cues, you'll see which cue is being fired, but you're not seeing any motion from it. Um, <clears throat> I just wanted to point that out because I acknowledge that my color executors are showing feedback, and that is because these executors are not actually linked to the rate master. They're not linked to anything because they don't have lighting information. They are just uh, plug-in commands, uh, which is why it appears that way. But any executor that's actually being fired under control of that stopped rate master, you will not see that progress. So just don't be alarmed when it looks like it's not working or something. Just be prepared for that aspect. Uh, but that's it for everything. So you can find this plugin for download for free on my website, jalphadesigns.com. You can contact me on Facebook or through my website for any questions, comments, or requests. Uh, there's a mailing list on the site, subscription on here. You know how social media works. Um, that's it. I hope you guys find some use for it. Stay tuned for more things as I am able to release them. And hope you enjoy.